So you're probably wondering why did George select Hosea 13, right, yep. to read at the beginning? Such a such a sorrowful kind of section of Hosea, and it's because we tend to look for idols in our life, and we find and we find that whenever we we look at idols things don't go very well. And it's because we do have a God that is jealous for our attention, jealous for us to be with him and not to care for idols. And so I chose that because I spent two weeks in China not too long ago. Went to China, uh, spent two weeks there. Um, Spent some time in Beijing, and then <clears throat> a little more time in, uh, in Shanghai. And while I was in Shanghai, I had a day trip about two hours away. I went to a little town. Well, it's not even a little town. Nothing's little over there. <laughs> There's 1.3 billion people. There's nothing little. Um, but I went to this town called Wuxi. It's about a two hours drive west of Shanghai. And while I was there... You know, I went. I went obviously for business, but it was a, it was a Saturday, and uh, and so they, they took me to, this Buddhist, park, a Buddhist park, and uh, there was a temple there, and in this park was also the largest, Buddhist, statue. In the world. Um, stood about 90 meters high, 90 meters high, on top of a pedestal that was also pretty high, on the side of a mountain that's also pretty high. And so as you can imagine, this statue sits way up into the sky, and you can see the statue from just about anywhere as you're traveling towards it. I mean, it's pretty impressive. You're going on the highway, and you look, and here's this enormous statue of of buddha and this is this is the this is the the real buddha not the happy buddha not the buddha that everybody kind of rubs the belly right there's another buddha there's a happy buddha as a matter of fact there are a lot of buddhas there are even living buddhas from what i understand uh, the dalai lama from tibet he he proclaims himself as a living Buddha. And there's even another living Buddha that isn't from Tibet. It is from uh, regular China, and I don't know what his name is. There's a lot of Buddhas, right? And so I was, I was like, what? What's, what is this all about? I was very curious. I, was, um, I, had, I, had, uh, I, had, a per I had two people accompanying me. I had the translator, young lady, um, uh, that her English name is Ivy. They give themselves their own names, own American names. Pretty funny. And the Ivy, Ivy, I V Y. And uh, and another gentleman who was from the university that I was visiting, uh, South Ocean College, and his name was Mark. And uh, and so I was very curious, and I was asking a lot of questions about, well, you know, who was Buddha, and um, why are there so many Buddhas and um, why do you call him Buddha? No. <laughs> so, interestingly enough, um, there was a there was like a show. There was like a presentation as well. Uh, at eleven o'clock, there was a presentation where there was this other other statue in the middle of the park. That it was this it was this other tower, and it had like a um, uh, it had a lotus flower. The lotus flower is very important in the Buddhist religion. And there was this lotus flower, and it was kind of closed up. And then there were statues all around the base with a fountain. And there were these dragons that were coming out and all these pretty interesting statues and everything. And so at 11 o'clock, there was a presentation, and it was the, it was the, um, the story of how the Buddha was born, you know, how the Buddha came about. 
and uh, and so it's it's music and it's fanfare and there's you know all these fountains now the, the dragons are are throwing water and and the the lotus flower starts opening up and there's music and there's a narration you know it's pretty intense and then out of the lotus flower comes this baby Buddha and the dragons are spraying water on the baby Buddha kind of like washing baby Buddha and this is then the story was about how Buddha uh, came to be and so I'm telling you all of this because in that park there were people that a lot of people that were burning incense they were putting money in the in the fountains placing money inside these money boxes uh, a lot of statues of Buddha and, and people were climbing this this mountain going to the base all so that they can rub the toes of the Buddha because it it provided you with confidence about things that you were uncertain about. And yes, there were a lot of people praying to the Buddha that were kneeling before Buddha and genuinely asking the Buddha for things. And it reminded me of it reminded me of the story in the Old Testament about Pharaoh and all the statues of birds and animals that Pharaoh would pray to and that they were empty and they were empty and I couldn't feel but have real sorrow and compassion for the people that were placing all of this faith and all of this energy praying to something that I knew was empty a statue that stood very high and that was very impressive but I knew that it was only made out of copper or bronze and I knew there was nothing inside and there was no one listening and I was very saddened by what I saw that they didn't know the true God that they didn't know that there was one that was different. And I had an opportunity to talk to the translator about Jesus. I, you know, we spent a lot of time in the car and we spent a lot of time in that park and, and God did give me the opportunity to talk to her and I, and I said, do you know Jesus Christ? Do you, have you heard about Jesus Christ? And she said, yeah, I've heard of him, but I don't know who he is. I don't know. And I said, are you Buddhist? And she says, no, I'm not a Buddhist. And I says, so what do you believe? And she says, well, I was never brought up in any religion. I, I only know how to be um, you know, responsible for myself, my own integrity, my own, my own ability. And I said to her, but is that enough? And she said, no, it's not. I, I make a lot of mistakes. I says, yeah, we all made a lot of mistakes. And I said, and why aren't you a Buddhist? She says, no, very few, maybe 50% of the population are really Buddhists. The other 50%, they're like me. They don't know. Again, I was so saddened by this revelation of a country of 1.3 billion people. That's a billion more than we have. Put it in perspective. And they don't know. They don't know. They pray to an empty God and they, or they don't have any understanding whatsoever. So that got me to think got me thinking. I said, how are we different from the Chinese? How are we different from the Buddhists? 
What is the object of our faith? What is the object of our faith? Who is Jesus Christ? And I think it's important that we know who the person of Christ is. Because this is who we place our faith upon. This is who we pray to. And how are we different from the Buddha? Or how is Christ different from the Buddha? So I put down several things here. I want you to kind of walk along with me on this. In the Gospels, the Gospels are pretty clear that Jesus is God incarnate. So the first thing that Jesus is, is that Jesus is God. He's not a creation of God. He is God. In John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, in John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were created through him. And apart from him, not one thing was created that has been created. And the word we know dwelt with us. And who is the word? Jesus Christ is the word. And so we know that Christ is God. These verses provide clear statements regarding the eternal nature of Jesus Christ. He was in the beginning. He has full deity. He is God. And he was the agent of the creation of the universe. Everything was made through him, by him, for him. So we know that he is all in all. One of the most concise statements of the deity of Jesus Christ is in John chapter 8, in verses 48 through 59. If you would go there with me, we're going to look at that, those verses. In John chapter 8. Verses 48 through 59. And it says, Then the Jews answered and said to him, Do we not say rightly that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father. And you dishonor me. And I do not seek my own glory, There is one who seeks and judges. Most assuredly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he shall never see death. Then Jesus said to him, now we know that you have a demon. Or the Jews said to him, I'm sorry. Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham is dead and the prophets, and you say, if anyone keeps my word, he shall never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who is dead and the Uh, And the prophets are dead? Who do you make yourself out to be? And Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father who honors me, of whom you say that he is your God. Yet you have not known him, but I know him. And if I say I do not know him, I shall be a liar like you. But I do know him and keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old and you have seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, Before Abraham was, 
I am.